Good morning, nerd fam, and welcome to Barcelona. We're here at Mobile World Congress all week reporting live with theCUBE. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by the fabulous Shelly Kramer, John Furrier, and Dave Vellante. Hey, Thank hey. you so much for being here with me <laughs> yeah. today. I don't know if you all know, it is my first MWC. Welcome. Wow. Very excited to be here. It is buzzing, the energy is crazy. Dave, I'm going to open up with you. I know you were listening to the keynote. What are we going to hear about all week? Yeah, so a lot <laughs> of the same story, right? You've got the telcos are all about connectivity. They spend tons of money on CapEx. And then you have the over-the-top vendors. I think one of the speakers said the five OTT vendors account for more than 50% of the network traffic. Yeah. So traffic's going through the roof. Revenues are not, but CapEx is. And that's the conundrum. So the big question this time around is, can the telco operators actually monetize 5G in a way that they weren't able to with the last wave in mobile. They monetized through connectivity, but everybody else sort of bogarted the network. You had an interesting analogy, John. You talked about some of these companies being glaciers. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see an acceleration due to the new technology here, like AI or some of the collaboration? Yeah, I think the big, the big story here from my standpoint is the wake up call that AI has given um, the industry, and you look at all the news and announcements, open gateway, uh, collaboration, kind of a unification theme around, we got to get our act together, there's so much CapEx investment and more coming, where the monetization points that Dave brought up are huge, because now AI is an acceleration on the business model opportunities as well as technology capabilities, so the story here is, the speed of what could happen from a change standpoint will be significantly different than what we've seen over the past decade, and telecom is known to be, you know, goes very slow, and I, I've called yeah. them glaciers move faster than <laughs> the telecom industry. Um, and so I think that's going to change. I think AI is the wake up call and the opportunity. It presents some challenges, but the opportunities far outweigh the challenges. And I think people are going to wake up, and the, the ability to put together the old technology, back office, and edge with they owning their own data will allow the operators and anyone in the telecom business to actually create really good new business models to add on top of the previous business model. So I think it's going to be a huge opportunity, not without its challenges. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Shelly, you were here bright and early. What, listening to the Pulse, what do you think we're going to hear this week? What are you most excited about? You know, the funny thing when you talk about monetization is this is not a new conversation. We've been talking about monetization for CSPs for the last It's kind of fundamental five, in business in general. Right, yeah. right it is, but yeah. it's been a challenge for telcos to figure out how we can help CSPs, how we can monetize it, and so, yeah, sure, now it's AI. But the reality of it is, AI does present some opportunities, it does present some challenges, and they got to figure it out. I mean, and, and I think vendors who are able to work with CSPs yeah. and help them figure this out, yeah. that's, the, that's the path forward. I mean, the thing, about, the thing to watch is the customer experience, because yeah. if you look at Open Gateway, for instance, technical issues, yeah. they bring the networks together, but you got to solve the security problems, yep. and also enhance the customer experience. So, if you get hacked, that's a bad customer experience, Dave. <laughs> uh, and never mind the, money that, yeah. the money that you lose. Lightly. But also, the new, new opportunities for the users. Yeah. This new user expectations around AI, seeing all the momentum. Oh. And I think that's going to be a big part of yeah. the shift is what's in it for the end user and what's the experience like, certainly speed and also latency and also yeah. capability. I, I think it's also important to point out that these, these glacial telcos <laughs> are really good at what they do. <laughs> yes. Right? yes! Connectivity yes. actually works. And you think, yeah, about, yeah, yeah. you think about what happened during the pandemic when so much of the network traffic had to shift back to, to landlines, yeah. they didn't miss a beat. And so as they talk about openness, everybody talks about you know, O-RAN and Open RAN, it's very exciting, but that O-RAN has to perform the same way that these reliable, hardened networks have, and that's a big reason why it takes so long, in fairness to the telcos. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I mean, we, we like glaciers. We all, we're all polar bears, <laughs> we need that, it's, it's good. We're going I'm excited to have that analogy coming through. One of the things for the rest of the week, one of the things that I'm noticing and that you're all touching on here is the theme of collaboration. We're entering an era when in terms to accelerate, it's not going to be everyone reinventing the wheel. There's going to be a, a ton of collaboration, not just in terms of full stack collaboration, but across multiple different teams, pulling into APIs. Are there any interesting collabs that you've seen or that you're expecting to see in this space that we might hear more about at the show? Dave, I'm going to bring it to I you. Think the big, I think the big collaboration is cloud. 
Yeah. And it's both a collaboration and it's something that scares the telcos a lot because again, they got disrupted by the over the top vendors totally. and now here's cloud yeah. building out their own networks. Yeah. And so they, they're stepping in, but they're doing so you know, yeah. carefully. But the fact is the cloud is going to dominate this business. The cloud operating model is, is, yeah. is a big wave that's washing over the telco industry. And the market is enormous. When Andy Jassy, John, talks about only 10% of the, yeah. the, the workloads are in the cloud, he has to be including telco for that because yeah. we know the traditional IT, yeah. it's much higher, yeah. but telco's not, and so he's eyeing that opportunity. Yeah. Partner, the partnerships remain critical in this industry. You're going to see that in the ecosystem immediately. I think this year you're going to see a lot of emphasis on partnerships because the cloud hosting is growing with AI. However, hybrid, Dave, is also growing. If you look at the rise of NVIDIA's GPU and now their, their um, software stack as well as um, the GPU clouds that are emerging, they're, not, they're their own clouds. So that's going to benefit the telcos because you've got the hybrid model on the implementation. So I think one of the issues here is going to be what are the implementation options? for these new architectures around AI. The telcos will be involved, you're going to see on-premise hosting yep. grow up, so new clouds are going to emerge. Uh, David Linthicum calls them micro-clouds. Yep. These micro-clouds will work with the big public clouds like AWS and Azure. So you're going to see a diversity in hosting options, Dave, and I think that's uh, going to be the AI story that no one will talk about in the cloud world because it's like, wait a minute, that's not public cloud, it's kind of a new cloud. So the super cloud model is emerging uh, as we had talked about for years, and, and uh, not, not exactly like we said, but kind of the same, micro clouds are the new clouds. The telcos will reap that opportunity big time. Shelly, what do you think? Well, I don't think we can talk about collaboration without talking about GSMA's Open Gateway, and exactly. that's all the big news today, right? And so I think there's 47 vendors, John, you mentioned that number earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, this whole initiative is about supporting CSPs and you know stronger, better together, and so I think this is a perfect time to be talking about that. I think we're going to hear a ton. We heard a ton about that already in the morning keynotes, yep. and so I think this is a very cool thing, a, a cool initiative that yeah. will help yeah. a lot. And and I, I think it's going to matter. I mean, we're going to need to see this collaboration yeah. both in terms of of regulation and progress and governance when it comes to AI as yeah. well as the development yeah. Yeah. of these new projects and, and stuff that's the, going on. The, yeah, thing of, the thing about the Open Gateway project, Shelly, is that not only does it highlight the partnership conversation in the ecosystem, right. but it's open source. So yeah. the role of open source will be a big factor, Dave, too, in this, this AI model as LLMs and foundation models growing on the open source. It's going to be interesting to see how the AI development stack emerges yeah. with all the open source. So the Linux Foundation is driving a lot of that open um, gateway activity. But if you got the 47 operators running in, in that network, that's over, that's over 270 networks. Yeah. Okay, Woo. so now you got open, open integration. That's going to help on security standards, fraud detection. There's a lot of benefits that come from that. So the open source world is coming like a freight train into this world as well, yeah. Dave. So yeah. it's got open source, you got cloud, you got hybrid. Yeah. And there's another data angle here too, because the, the, the data is locked inside of these telco stacks today. Yeah. And so it, open, data, open data formats are really going to change that. And especially, I mean, we know it's AI, you can't do AI without data. Right. And the data has to be of high quality, it has to be consistent and coherent. And so these open formats are going to evolve such that people, that applications will have access to that data and those applications will be intelligent because as we've been talking about in the road to intelligent data apps, right. Shelley, we're layering that AI, that intelligence, on top of existing apps to now create digital representations of our business, people, places, and things. Yep. There's a whole, whole new wave of innovation coming. Whole new world. <laughs> yeah, there absolutely is. Now, we're talking a lot at a very high level how this is affecting the telcos and the big companies. One of the things that stood out to me when we were listening to the keynote on our way in this morning was how all of, this, all of these efforts are translating to the user. And, and I saw big themes around humanity. They were talking about how here in Spain, they actually have bracelets that detect, their IoT bracelets that detect if you're experiencing domestic violence and they're able to get you resources and help. Now those are the kind of solutions that I think are going to be incredibly interesting. It's not just going to be high level connectivity and speed and latency like you're talking right. about. We're going to have new solutions that actually save lives in a similar technology. I heard them also mention that they were decreasing yeah. maternal mortality using AI as well. Yeah. So yeah. when we, it's. Well, and also just think about elder care and we've got this massive Absolutely. aging population and how we can serve that part of the population 
in, in terms of health monitoring and all that. So. so when everybody talks about AI, of course everybody talks about training in the cloud. Yeah. Jensen on the earnings call last week, talked. he said that at least 40% of NVIDIA's workloads are for inference, their shipments for inference. And so when you talk about like the bracelets and we think about yeah. IoT and all these connected devices, those are going to be intelligent and there's going to be the inference being done at the edge. Yeah, 100%. And that's a, be, be, collectively, that's a massive amounts of computing power. AI will be trained in the cloud and then push those models, push down, and then it, iterated in near real time. I mean, yeah. that is a whole new paradigm. Sorry to use that word, I feel like we're back <laughs> in 1999. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's radically different than how we think about the edge yeah. today. And that's, that's the user experience issue we were talking about. That's a new net new experience and a revenue opportunity again. Back to the health, the edge data use cases, the intelligent edge and smart cities is expanding rapidly. I think again, AI brings a massive accelerant option to the table. And again, I think the telcos are going to reap the benefits, but it's going to be developers, it's going to be the applications that sit on those networks, the next watch, the next um, right. wearable device, bracelet, whatever that is, sensor. This is now going to be the, the, the realization of edge intelligent edge, Dave, we've been expecting for a decade. And, and things like private 5G, the 5G build out, the other really important point is, the traditional IT vendors, like the Dells, the HPEs, the IBM, they've always sold into telco, into telco data centers, yeah. but now they are eyeing an opportunity to go after that, that hardened telco equipment. And it's a multi, it's a trillion dollar opportunity for them. Yeah. So you're seeing the disaggregation of the telco yeah. network that's where ORAN comes in, that's where private 5G comes in, and you're seeing a whole spate, to your point about collaboration, a yeah. whole spate of either acquisitions, HPE bought Athenet yeah. last year, which was a Dell partner, you're seeing other partnerships evolve, you're going to hear more from companies like NTT in these types of partnerships. Uh, Red Hat, as you mentioned, yeah. is yeah. a big player in this whole equation, yeah. so the traditional IT vendors they're sharpening their knives, licking their chops, trying to get into this business in a big way. Yeah, big time. And You're making me reason. hungry, we're here in Spain, tapas, now, now I'm ready for lunch already, thanks uh, a lot, Dan. After that dinner last night, yeah, I don't no. know. <laughs> Great food here. Oh, no, I, I'm excited. Do, Shelly, are there any standouts to you in this space do you think are going to be clear winners over the next few years? Oh, that's a really tricky question. Um, you're a really brilliant person, so I feel you're inclined. You know, I think there's so much opportunity here. Um, I'm not going to point to any one person. I, I think there's so much opportunity here. I think we've got to see who, whose glaciers can move more rapidly yeah. and, uh, and really understand that this is about delivering for CSPs and monetization and also customers because as you were talking about serving customers, you know, one of the things that occurred to me is Customers have no patience. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to wait for you to get your act together. If you can't deliver what I'm expecting and an experience, I'm gone. The real, the real winner, the real winner that I see, Savannah, is data. Yeah. Not, not any one company, because it's yeah. a rising tide. The data will float all the boats. The data value will become the differentiation, and the telcos own their Good own data. Up. And the question I've been asking everyone in, the, in that telcos and the operators is that, what are you going to do with the data? Net new business models. So, the foundation model success in AI is coming fast to data value, yeah. taking that data exhaust, as we used to say during the big data days, Dave, and turn it into gold. So I think if the data aspect of it will become a foundation model, 5G will have a model around. I think you're going to start to see AI get infiltrated quickly into the key operational data, user data, and that's going to spin into a business model opportunity. And I think that's going to be, to me, where the secret sauce will come out of and the winners will emerge that take care of their data in a new way. I'll name some names, but first of all, hey, thank you. Let's put some <laughs> Microsoft is going to be a big winner here because yeah. they've, they've got the massive software estate, they've got yeah. the AI play, yep. Yep. and they're, they're collaborating with those guys. I think Amazon as well is going to be a big winner. Google is a sort of a distant third in cloud, yep. and they're sort of under attack now with their search franchise, so we'll see how, yeah. how they play. NVIDIA is also going to be a oh, big winner. Well, absolutely. And, and, and now Cisco, you've got Cisco kind of defending its base, trying to modernize its network, bringing its networking and security business together. So they're an interesting one to watch. And then you got guys like Arista, powering the cloud. Uh, and, and you've got these, these newcomers, like Extreme Networks. I said newcomers, they've been around, but still, yeah. 
they want to get a piece of that pie. Now HPE yeah. and Juniper are coming together, and I think a company like Dell is going to do yeah. very yeah. well in this space. And other companies like Supermicro, some of the ODMs, are really yeah. going to start to take off. And then you have these specialized telco companies like Rakuten, who yeah. are going after open. Dish Avenir. Networks is, is, is yeah. transforming. We'll see if they can actually become a player here. Avenir, you mentioned? Yeah. Right? Avenir, so, yeah. Avenir, right? Yeah. yeah, the HPE angle is interesting. We'll have Antonio Neri coming on next. We'll talk to us, but the missed portion of the Juniper acquisition points to what I've been saying about the data. That. That's the AI piece. There is an operational uh, infrastructure in all the edge and scenarios where you had old technology or operating technology and IT coming together, the classic OT, IT, edge conversation. That now is shifted to back office and actually edge itself. So I think what MIST did with Juniper was they used AI to help operate the devices to be more efficient based on traffic patterns. That is an example of using data and AI to make operational efficiencies come in. That's going to lower costs and increase the revenue opportunities. So I think the MIST is a tell sign to where the, this industry is going, where yeah. AI will be used as an operational lever. And I think that's going to be where the efficiencies come from, Dave. That's where the user experience will come from. And it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what investments AI in, has an OS in AI in yeah. the operating systems themselves, yeah. whether it's the OS sets themselves, and then what implementation approaches. So GreenLake points to as a service, yeah. MIST points to there. So I think HPE, HPE's got a great networking opportunity, um, and I think that's a tell sign of where the, where the industry goes, because that's where the ball moves down the field. So Juniper paid, I think it was 400 million for, for MIST. It's like, it's like yeah. the VMware yeah. of, of that world, okay? Yeah, so now, and, and you know, HP I think is paying, what is it, 12 or 14 billion for, for Juniper? I, I got to look it up, but somewhere, it's substantial. I think it's 14 billion. A big part of that value is the AI yeah. in MIST that HP gets, and now HP is going to bring Aruba and Juniper together, and we have Antonio Neri coming on, we're going to ask him yeah. about that. <laughs> 14 how billion. Into, into, 14 billion, how it fits into GreenLake. Yeah. That's a major, yeah. major play for HPE. It is, Subsequent totally. to the breakup of HP and HPE, HP is, HPE's made some tuck-in acquisitions. This is a major transformative move yeah. for them, and it's something so, to so watch. So I wrote, I wrote an article on this, and, I, and it's 14 billion, it's an all cash deal, but the more important thing that I noted was that it signals the shift in the landscape, Dave, between cloud and AI native networking. AI native networking, AI stacks, AI native applications will be the most talked about thing in the next couple of years because yes. we're seeing the beginning of that. We saw cloud native come in and now we're seeing AI native stacks come in. So the HPE Juniper deal was, an, it was a shift on cloud and AI native networking. So cloud native, moves to AI native, <laughs> so, <laughs> so edge to cloud really makes sense, and that's yeah. a good move for HP. I was really, really bullish on their deal. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be one of many exciting conversations that we're having, excited that we start the show with that. We've got great guests on all week. I want to talk about hardware for a second. We're talking a lot about software, data, and AI right now, but we saw the, the, the Vision Pro recently came out from Apple. There was actually someone, I knew I was on my way to MWC because someone had their Vision Pro on, on my aircraft, awesome. which was interesting. Qualcomm just announced something this morning called the XR Hub, which is essentially uh, their, their competitor, or at least their show car product in this space that, that allows you to, that connects any AR glasses to a, a pocket smartphone situation, which is essentially what Apple did, but what they're trying to do is decouple the battery issues and the weight from that into a mixed experience headset. Do any of you think there's going to be any other cool hardware? We've got clicks and the keyboard coming on, which you know I'm very excited about this morning. So, full disclosure, I'm excited about that. When you walk around this show, I, I've never been to CES. You did CES yeah, just yeah. recently, but you, you see all these companies that you've never heard of. Yeah. You'll see robots, and there's just yeah. amazing things. This is, the IoT explosion is really underscored by some of these cool innovations that are coming. I, I, I say, the companies you've never heard of, they're not household names, but they've got big booths, so they're obviously doing business, yeah. and some really cool activity in robotics, and, yeah. and, and edge devices, and, and as part of the telco network, it's all connected. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited to do a good walk of the show floor for those of you folks at home who don't have the opportunity to see what we're able to see. This is very similar to CES. We've got tens of thousands, 70,000 people here right now with us. And, and the investment in these booths, yeah. this is the entire marketing budget for some of those small companies that you're talking about <laughs> for the year. I mean, seriously, yeah, believe me, this I is know. their yeah. chance to show off to meet with yeah. this global audience with all of these worldwide thought leaders as well as buyers. There's a lot of buyers in this room right now milling around. I see badges flipped over. And, 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 and it's exciting. I mean, it's really exciting. I can't wait to see some of the new stuff that we haven't seen yet. And uh, yeah, I'm just super thrilled yeah. with right. my first. It's going to be great. 
MWC. All right. All this right. is great. Well, Dave, John, Shelley, I can't wait to interview so many fantastic guests right here on this beautiful stage here live on the Cube in Barcelona. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching the Cube, the leader in enterprise tech.